We continue our worship series on change. The first two weeks of our series helped us examine and expand our own understanding about our capacity for change. We were reminded that the Creator God made us for change and we're being made new, new always from the inside out by the ever creative spirit of God within us. Our spiritual growth is deeply connected to our ability to embrace change. We evolve, we grow. If you've ever left Play-Doh out too long without tending to it, you know that it gets dry and cracked and falls apart. It's a metaphor for what happens if we try and resist change, if we try and just stay the same. But if you keep working it, reshaping it, molding it into something new, it stays flexible and workable. We focus on the what can I make next instead of just standing still. And then we can keep growing amazing things. In our scripture today, we're going to hear Jesus talk about letting go of life as it is in order to create and multiply the love that is eternal. What feels like chaos or recklessness of change is the breaking open of possibility and the sprouting of new life. This is what it means to follow the change maker Jesus and serve his purpose of the world in the world with more love. Please stand as you are comfortable for the call to worship and prayer. We come to this place of prayer. We bring, we bring our hopes and dreams, our doubts and fears. We, come to worship God. we are on a journey of learning, celebrating, growing, changing. We are guided by the Spirit of God that unites and holds us. Amen. Let us pray. Breaking open, God, you call us to let the seeds of your love be planted anew in us again and again. Open us to letting go of how we think things are and allow us to release, allow us release as we are broken open into new life. Calm our fears and animate our spirits for this time of discovery. Amen. Please remain standing for the opening hymn.
Our contemporary reading is the poem Rebirth by the poet Alex L. Pablo Picasso was one of the most influential artists of the 20th century. This is not because of one style, although, although he is famous as the father of Cubism, but because he had several artistic periods during his life, and he was constantly changing, innovating, and pushing himself to discover new expressions of art. One of his most famous quotes is this, every act of creation is first of all an act of destruction. He knew that in order to create something new, a beloved and even famous way of painting had to give way, had to destruct in order to construct the new. He also said, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once you grow up. As we age, we become more afraid of letting go. But rebirth is part of our faith. Hear this poem, Rebirth. There will be moments when you will bloom fully and then wilt, only to bloom again. If we can learn anything from flowers, it is that resilience is born even when we feel like we are dying. God is still speaking. Thank you, God. The gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 12, verses 20 to 26. Our gospel reading today from the book of John takes place following Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Just prior to this entry was the passage about the priests plotting to kill Lazarus because it was after the Lazarus miracle that many Jews were deserting and following Jesus. So there was tension in the crowds. And because of the when and where, we understand that Jesus is well aware that his time is short, and he is perhaps wanting to cover as much ground as possible, speak to large groups instead of audiences of one or two. And then these small groups of Greeks approach asking for face time which then triggers the story of the grain of wheat. Hear these words from the Gospel of John. There were some Greeks in town who had come up to worship at the feast. They approached Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Can you help us? Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip together told Jesus. Jesus answered, Time's up. The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life, just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. If any of you wants to serve me, then follow me. Then you'll be where I am, ready to serve at a moment's notice. The Father will honor and reward anyone who serves me. God is still speaking. Let's pray. O oh, gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, patience to wait for you. Grant us, O oh God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture today was read from Eugene Peterson's The Message. I favored this reading over the New Revised Standard Version. In the New Revised Standard Version, 
some of you might re remember the words, those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life will keep it for eternal life. I always struggled with that language because I don't necessarily hate my life. What does that mean? He goes on, Jesus goes on saying, whoever serves me must follow me, whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Well, I get that, but that loving and hating life, losing it, keeping it, always kind of befuddled me. But Eugene Peterson helps clarify this with his paraphrase, where he says, listen carefully, unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it's never more than just a grain of wheat. So if you're holding a grain of wheat in your hand, that's all it's ever going to be, a grain of wheat. And he goes on, but if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life just as it is destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, You'll have it forever, real and eternal. So holding on to life as it is, doomed. But if you let it go, you'll have it forever, reckless in love. That speaks to me. Today in our worship series about change, we're talking about how sometimes we have to let go in order to make room for something new. Let go in order to change. And that can be scary. In the movie Frozen, uh, Elsa is a queen who has special powers to create ice and snow, but she's afraid of the powers because she's afraid of hurting people, so she hides away so she won't have to use them and she won't hurt anybody by accidentally freezing them. But finally, with the help and the love of her sister Anna, she sees that she must use her powers for good and save the people of her hometown. Today in our scripture, Jesus says we can't always hold on to the old ways and we can't be afraid of letting go. That song, remember, Let It Go from Frozen? It's all connected there, all right? Yeah. Someone wanted me to sing it. No, 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 no. We're not doing that today. So uh, we can't be afraid of letting go and we, um, because it's only then that we can grow into something even more beautiful. If we stay the same way forever, it's like being frozen, like the frozen village in that movie. There's many types of changes in our life. Those life milestones, graduating from school, moving out of your parents' home, marriage, starting a family, empty nesting, retirement, Many of those changes just sort of happen. It's kind of going with the flow of life. We accept that those are part and parcel of just being human in this culture. In fact, if those things don't happen, if those changes don't occur, you're an outlier of sorts, right? If people don't get married, or if you don't have children, or if you live in your parents' basement until you're 50, people who continue to work and don't retire those are the outliers of our, of our culture, right? We accept these life milestone types of changes. In fact, we even celebrate them. Even if there are some stress, there's some stress around those times. But then there's those changes that we cause with intention. And those are the changes that Jesus is talking about. He's saying, don't resist change. That is indeed part of his message, don't resist change. Don't cling to what is, but what was. Be willing to move forward. But even more importantly, he's saying that we move forward not just by going along with what life throws our way, but we must move forward with intention, with a God-directed plan. And that only happens with discernment listening to the voice of God and realizing that sometimes what God is asking of us is outside of what we, what we are familiar with or what we're comfortable with or what we even understand. It might be something we were not prepared for. 
or asking for. In the workshop offered by Marsha McPhee, that is the author of this series we're, we're using, she holds an interview with the Reverend Lily Brock, a pastor of Metropolitan Community Church of St. Louis and also a former consultant to churches. She offers some ideas about the cycle of change and speaks of different zones, the red zone being one that is filled with fear and anxiety. But she reminds us that when we are anticipating changes, instead of moving to that red zone, that we pause and we take a few breaths and a few steps back and let it go, as the song says. We allow ourselves to slow down and listen. And then we are more likely to have a breakthrough rather than a breakdown. As Jesus shared, growth comes out of the dark and fertile earth, out of a space that is undisturbed in order to hear the call and guidance for growth and new creation. So by moving into the space of stillness, we can seek the light, the light that's a metaphor for knowledge, for wisdom, for hope, and we can grow into that light. But when faced with change, the most difficult thing sometimes is to do nothing, right? To be still. We're often drawn into this reactive posture, immediately assessing and often resisting, but going into some motion, some action. And that's just the opposite of what Jesus is telling his disciples in this farewell address. In this story, he is saying goodbye to his disciples with the understanding that they are the new growth. They are what will emerge from the seed. They will need to be still and then show the new growth, the new creation. So yes, it's about Jesus' death, but it's also, and more importantly, about what's going to sprout after his death, what will carry on. Those parting words of Jesus to his disciples, what feels like death and destruction, what might feel like loss, will not destroy us in the most important ways. I learned about loss and letting go early in my life from an older cousin. I was about 12 or so, and my older siblings had been gone for years from our family home. Uh, and I already had several nieces and a nephew, and so they were already starting their families. My mother's sister and family came to Cleveland for a summer while they were in transit between my uncle's assignments with the Department of Agriculture. One of my cousins, about six years older than me, spent a great deal of time with my family and me. He became that big brother figure, and what a joy I felt with his acknowledgement and relationship and attention. And I wasn't alone anymore. But as summer came to an end, he was going off to college. We took him to the airport. In those days, you walked with your people right to the gate, and then you stood in the window and you watched the plane leave. Remember those days? Some, some of us, yeah. And as he was readying to board, tears started streaming down my face. And I was just suddenly so embarrassed by this open display of sadness and yes, some anxiety, because he'd become this older relative on whom I could confide and depend, and the sudden awareness that I was going to be alone again. I ran into the bathroom until the plane was gone. Later, I sent him a note apologizing for my abrupt exit, acknowledging that my tears and embarrassment, uh, my open display of tears, his response to that letter has stayed with me to this day. He said, with his family moving so much, he had to say goodbye many, many times. And each time, he had no idea if he would ever see that person again, but reflected on the time they had together and what gifts that time brought him. And then he went on to share some of the memories of our own summer fun. He reminded me that I wasn't alone, but was surrounded by many who loved me, even if they weren't necessarily in the same house. And I've managed quite well up to then, and 
I was dealing well with my occasional periods of solitude. But in closing, he counseled me, life will bring many changes, some happy, some sad, but each one offers opportunities for growth and live into the change. Let go of that fear and anxiety and grow into something even more beautiful. Letting go and listening to how God uses those moments. Remembering those words still brings twinges of emotions for me. Such a wise young man he was. Everything changes. We all change, and we all will continue to change. But the real challenge is pursuing this change with some intention. That's what Jesus was talking about. It involves letting go of old expectations so that we might make way for new narratives about our lives or our church. Such new narratives can shift our experience into one with more lasting vitality. Jesus needs to be the center of this narrative. He knows that in God's reality, to change is just the beginning of that next story. I attended a lecture recently, and the lecturer cited some data that offered that in this era that we've just lived through in this church, these years since post-World War II until perhaps the mid to late 70s, it was a time of unprecedented growth in churches. And that period of time is actually the outlier. That period of time is actually the exception to what church has always been and perhaps what will be in the future. That time of exponential growth, that time of defining church as how many people we had in the pews, um, that time of many kids, many families, 30 people in the choir. You've heard people talk about those memories, right? So now we're moving back to a more typical type of church involvement. The problem, most of us here grew up in that era of exceptional church, and that's what we know. That's what we think is normal. And now facing this idea of change of how we do church is kind of a, it's a bit challenging and even anxiety provoking for many. Change. But we initiate change often in other parts of our life, right? Here's a few stories. The story of Brad Gold, he's 72 now in Los Angeles. He says when he got laid off from a management position with a struggling restaurant change, chain, he knew he wasn't going to find another job. So he's opened his own restaurant at age 53. And at age 72, it's still thriving. Scott Schmeren in St. Charles, Illinois, 40 years old, struggled with obesity all of his life. He lost and kept off more than 180 pounds, and that was 15 years ago, and he's still thriving. He didn't want to spend his whole life being sad, depressed, and obese. He embraced change. And then one that I am familiar with, Alan Klein in San Francisco, who lost his wife and used the time after her death to recreate how he was living in the world. He decided to use what was important to her. She enjoyed laughter and humor, enjoying life. So he wrote a book. His book, The Healing Power of Humor, is now in nine foreign language translations. People can change with intention. People can embrace change. Then there's my friend Tim. I've talked about Tim before, and I have Tim's permission to share this story. He helped script it out a little bit for me. He struggles with a great deal of anxiety, but they originate from the way he experiences the world as a result of being on the autis autism spectrum. Tim has a very hard time with change. Anticipating new ways of doing things or new tasks brings on these waves of anxiety that have rendered him near crisis mode on many occasions. Efforts to get him to consider alternative treatment options were unsuccessful. 
because that would mean change. He would rather cling to this life as he knew it than dive into this new and unknown process. But this past summer was really bad for Tim, and it was getting too many crises. The crises were kind of linking together and not ending. He got a new case manager who heard him and listened. He had several people in, in his life that were supporting him and working together with Tim. And finally, he admitted that he no longer wanted to live this way. And with the help of a new doctor, the new case manager, and some encouragement from his friends, he took the leap into a new treatment regimen, and it's working. He calls me every day telling me the incremental improvements he's experiencing and the joy. Tim had to let go of what was in order to grow into something more beautiful. And then there's this more recent story of Archwood United Church of Christ. Archwood UCC in Cleveland holds this long present in, presence in the Westside community. The congregation has existed for over 200 years and the building has been around since the early 1900s. But as with many congregations, Archwood holds a commitment to mission to the community while practicing their faith. And because of declining membership, they had to think about how are we going to continue. But they didn't want to compromise their presence in the community. While many churches were opting for mergers, Archwood said, no, we want to stay here. They have a food ministry, and they didn't want to vacate their building, abandon their building, and then have uh, contribute to neighborhood blight. They were pretty firm in staying, where, staying put. So Archwood approached the Metro West Development Center, and after some additional negotiations and relationship building and back and forth, the Julia de Burgos Cultural Arts Center became a tenant. The Cultural Arts Center is a nonprofit community center with a mission to serve Latino families and artists through social and cultural programming. The church buildings had everything they could want for their culturally minded organization. A large recreation room, a kitchen, and classrooms, a party hall, plenty of storage. And so after director Leticia Lopez got approval from her center's board, it began leasing properties from Archwood UCC in 2018. Here's a picture of some of the space that they're utilizing in the church. It just so joyful to me. It's just a wonderful space. Director Lopez said that since becoming Archwood's tenant, their organization has grown rapidly so much that they are, they're hiring new staff to increase their capacity to serve the community. Archwood UCC and the center have had a great relationship since the get-go because the church has always been supportive of the center's mission and has given them plenty of liberties as tenants. Moving into the space was risky for the center, the director says, because they were used to small spaces. And here there was much more financial responsibility. But they had to take the risk and grow, right? And once they moved, everyone saw the growth that came with the building, and they've tripled their list of community partners. It's just really amazing. So this past summer, ownership of the building was transferred to the community center. And Archwood now is the tenant. Archwood continues in their space with a vital congregation and continues with their community mission focus. The director, Leticia Lopez, says, the world changes, we all have to evolve, and what's challenging is that we have to ensure that we are attracting everyone. I love that. Both of these entities took amazing risks, but changed created, and created space for new growth in so many ways for so many people. They allowed the seed to be planted in the ground, to be still and to discern, then new growth appeared. And in both entities, church and community, the missions are thriving. In our scripture today, Jesus asks us to let go of life as it is in order to create 
and multiply the love that is eternal. What might feel like chaos or recklessness with change is the breaking open of possibility and the sprouting of new life. Marcia, Marcia McPhee offers that when she's approaching change and begins to feel that churning anxiety, you know, with that anxiety, she considers that that's the moment that she knows she has to stop and step back and allow the spirit to enter. And it's in those moments of calm, in those moments of meditation and prayer, that ideas for new growth take place. This is what it means to follow the change maker, Jesus, and serve his purpose of more love in the world. Jesus, the change maker. We've heard of Jesus as savior, as Lord, as social justice provocateur, but change maker really suits his overarching mission, right? Jesus calls us to let go of the old expectations and let them fall away to recognize that he calls us to change. And we must approach change with intention, with stillness, with discernment, and most importantly, with God. So let us live into this new creation that God offers us every day with joy and anticipation and hope. Let the people say, Amen. As we enter our time of prayer, I ask you to get comfortable, both feet on the floor, place your hands on your lap in a position of receiving. 
offer yourself to God as you sit and listen and just breathe lifting to God all those named and all those that we hold in our hearts God of transformation, we come today with hearts and minds focused on change. We ask to be shown the way forward, how we might become something new, something better. A change can be hard and sometimes not done with intention. Sometimes we encounter unexpected loss, tragedy, so we lift in prayer those who have experienced change not of their doing, those who have experienced change in their sense of identity or their work. Let them know they still have value no matter how unsettled their circumstances. We pray for those who are changed as a result of health conditions. May they feel the healing power of your love and care. May they know that even in this time of distress, and this feeling of brokenness, they are whole. For those who experience a change in their sense of home, may they be welcomed into a safe and vibrant community of belovedness. And for those who are experiencing changes in their lives, conflicts with family, may they find strength and courage to move forward, knowing that you hold them close with your love and care. And for this community, as we discern our own path forward, as we listen to each other and to you, dear God, we pray that we find our way to change with intention as you ask us to, that we stay relevant and vibrant and invitational as we continue to follow the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The United Church of Christ is reaching out for help in their disaster relief efforts for the victims of the hurricanes of 2022, specifically in the aftermath of Fiona and Ian. Your gifts enables the church to be present with people in these catastrophic times to offer immediate relief and support as well as planning for the long-term recovery. The United Church of Christ works through and with a network of global and local partners and information on how to donate can be found on the UCC website. I encourage you to give generously. And now Mike McGaw wants to share a bit of our summer mission experiences. Thank you, Sue. Uh, many of you will recall the ferocious tornado outburst that destroyed uh, large swaths of houses in an area northwest of Dayton in May of 2019. Dayton is still rebuilding from that devastating storm. And uh, this church's Middlebird missionaries were in Dayton in July to help. The vast majority of houses that were destroyed in the storm were lower income rental units and the landlords chose to redevelop away from this use. A charitable organization in Dayton stepped in to take the lead in responding to this disaster by implementing a, a really novel idea. They would resettle these displaced folks not by finding alternative rental housing, but rather the organization would identify stable neighborhoods and then redevelop abandoned or distressed properties 
and help those displaced by the tornadoes to get into a position of being able to qualify for a mortgage and be able to purchase these redeveloped homes, offering a sustainable future of home ownership. Eight of our missionaries spent a long weekend, Saturday through Monday, at one such property. And we had another person join us on Saturday to help out as well. This house was in the last stages of redevelopment and the organization running the program was going to engage a commercial contractor to finish the work needed to make the house uh, ready for sale. But we accomplished quite a lot. We removed and replaced exterior windows, installed kitchen cabin cabinetry, and then caulked mudded walls and painted most of the rooms in the house. This was just in a few days. This was, uh, there was much less to complete uh, and, and therefore cost for a commercial contractor when, by the time we left. We could not do this, though, without the dedicated uh, Middleburg Missionaries crew um, that came that weekend and the hospitality of the church who housed our folks while we were there and your generosity through the mission giving uh, that you offered to cover our, uh, that covered our expenses that made the project happen. Our church provided $235 to support this effort and you can see what an outsized impact it had. Thank you for your kind support. And now I invite the ushers to come forward to collect the offering.
From the Gospel according to Elsa, let it go, let it go. When I'll rise like the break of dawn, that perfect girl is gone. Here I stand in the light of day. Let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway. Remember that perfection is not the point, but growth, which needs both light and rain. Go into the world knowing that the potter God is still shaping and reshaping you as you were made to do, that the teacher Jesus is inviting you to a change of heart, making it all so very possible, and that the adventurous spirit is luring you to more play and curiosity in your precious life. Go in peace. Stay in courage. Amen.